So we've just finished the job for Panasonic promoting their new mirrorless camera, the S1H. I wang on a lot about reductive cinematography. And what I mean by that is I mean reducing the amount of equipment down, but still producing high-end cinematic content. This mirrorless camera really fits into that ethos because it produces images that really should be from a full-size film camera. And so when Panasonic approached us, one of the things that I thought would be interesting is to treat it like it was a professional film production and just swap out what would, would normally be a professional film camera and replace it with this little mirrorless camera and see what differences that made. I think the footage speaks for itself. I mean, we managed to, I think, convincingly produce a film that looks like it's shot on a professional motion picture camera. Our kind of mission statement and our point that we were trying to make was to make something cinematic or to make it immersive, a high-end photographic value. Primarily, it's about your engagement to the craft. The S1H has 14 stops of dynamic range, which is equivalent to something like an Alexa. Well, I didn't really make any adjustments on how I lit. When we got into the grave, we were very pleased to see that it did manage to retain that kind of detail. As I have a set of um, Leica M rangefinder lenses that I got rehoused, and I was really pleased to use the lenses with the camera. By virtue of it being mirrorless, means that there's a whole range of lenses that you can adapt to use with that camera. Next door to my workshop, there is a gentleman by the name of Richard Spare. So he's, uh, he's got work at the V&A and he does a technique of printing called dry point printing. Uh, and what for me is so magical about this process is it's a very kind of considered, beautiful, textural, kind of immersive process. For a while, to be honest, me and Ian had been thinking we wanted to do a film about what happens to be Ian's next door neighbour who is this amazing master printmaker who's been in exhibitions all over the world. Um, and then we were approached by Panasonic, who came to us with a brief of making a documentary about someone local to you. So we thought, you know, you can't get any more local than next door. And the luxury we had, because we're next door, we could plan our storyboard with reference images. I then was able to kind of take our, our reference frames and, and piece them together and start planning what structure of the video is going to be. Well, actually, what we do today is I have this uh, my iPhone with me, and on this there's a thing called Artemis, and what it does is it emulates all of the film frames. It would be nice just to kind of start getting an idea of the kind of frames that we're interested in, mm. and then that'll be our kind of our blueprint for when we're shooting. Yeah. So James, that's a shot there, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. So that that that's the shot. Well, it was really great going through the process with James because um, when he first saw the space, he, he didn't really, because this space has a lot of overhead strip lighting. It's good for a, an artist working if you want to be able to see what you're doing, but from a photographic point of view, it's a disaster because it's basically just a glowing white box with no shape at all. So when James first saw the place, he just saw this kind of glowing white box and was like, you know, are we at the right location? That's why I really quite enjoyed this kind of transformation because you're starting off with something that is very kind of pedestrian in a way, visually, do you know what I mean? And you're shaping it into something that becomes cinematic. And that's our whole kind of, that's the whole craft. Taking something and having the imagination to know what it can be and then, and then having the skills to get you to make it that way. You want the viewer to look into the image. You want it, you want it to feel immersive. So I'm thinking of how can I transform a space into something that I believe makes a purer kind of photographic point, I guess. So if you think about light, for example, to shape light, you either add light or you reduce light or you use a combination of the two. So what we do is when we walk into a, uh, into a space, the first thing I'm thinking about is how do we reduce the ambience of the light down? Because that allows you then to use smaller fixtures. So what we've done with this whole kind of reductive kind of philosophy is what we're doing. So starting off uh, by reducing everything down to the bare bones of what we actually need. Now, because the cameras are getting more sensitive now, that means that we can use less light, but we have to do that in a controlled way. Hey, my name's Richard, Richard Spare, and I'm a printmaker. I've been making artwork like this for about 50 years, started off at art college and uh, continued ever since. I suppose Rembrandt's work, really, looking at his work, and you know, he was operating in the 1600s, and it's still possible just to produce work of similar style to his. Um, well, it's a lovely process. Uh, it's beautiful and simple, and um, I love the line. The process is just very beautiful. He has this beautiful old Victorian machinery that is used for this process. The space that he works in has this kind of history around it, and it's got all the objects have this kind of like feeling of kind of their own sort of personal history, and that really appealed to me. So there's a nice symmetry between an artist creating a beautiful image and shooting on a camera that can also create a beautiful image. 
I start off with a big sheet of copper. I draw directly onto the copper with a, a sharp tool. When I come to printing it, the ink is pushed into the plate and collects in the groove I've made from the incision and uh, then I watercolour on top of it. So it's a combination of watercolour and the black rich velvety quality of the dry point line. You're never fully aware of what the image is going to look like when you're drawing on the plate and that's one of the exciting things about the medium. Um, it's always a, a, you know, an exciting time when you're pulling the first print off to see what you have. Richard's process is, is very focused and it's very delicate. And it's the sort of thing that he can spend weeks making a piece of art and get completely absorbed in it. And so he wanted the audience to really feel kind of almost a tactile, handmade quality of what he's doing. But I'm re really excited about this project because it get it out there and people will see it and uh, realise what an exciting way it is to, to create art using this medium, which is very old.